Have you ever pondered the connection between reactivated herpes virus and conditions like ME-CFS, post-COVID, and post-Borrelia? It's a compelling link, backed by a wealth of research and studies. An array of studies has demonstrated that many suffering from ME-CFS have seen improvements from antiviral treatments specifically targeting herpes virus. It's a significant discovery, illustrating the potential of these treatments and the role herpes virus may play in these conditions. Furthermore, research has shown that a majority of those with ME-CFS suffer from a specific form of immune suppression, characterized by a lack of certain antibodies against EBV, namely EBNA and VCA. This intriguing finding further cements the connection between herpes virus and ME-CFS. Several studies have also shown the presence of dutypase and polymerase proteins in the blood of the majority of those with ME-CFS, specifically from EBV. This evidence provides another link in the chain, connecting reactivated herpes virus with these conditions. A study conducted by Bragi and Professor Anders Rosen revealed elevated EBV levels in the saliva of those with ME-CFS. This discovery provides yet another piece of the puzzle, demonstrating the potential importance of herpes virus in these conditions. However, the diagnostic process for herpes virus is still lacking. It can be challenging to distinguish between a reactivation or dormant virus long after the primary infection because immunoglobulin M or IgM is only present for up to six months. IgM is the only antibody that can confirm active infection. Immunoglobulin G or IgG remains regardless of whether the virus is dormant or active. Therefore, a serology test often shows the same result for a person with a dormant or reactivated herpes virus. In conclusion, there is substantial evidence to suggest that the reactivation of various herpes viruses could be the root cause in many cases of ME, CFS, post-COVID, and post-Borrelia. It's a connection that warrants further investigation and may potentially shape future treatments. Many more individuals with ME, CFS, and post-COVID should have the opportunity to try antiviral treatment against reactivated herpes virus, as well as immunoglobulin, which can be effective in cases of immune suppression. This could enhance the body's ability to fight off the herpes viruses. Over the years, several individuals have reported becoming healthy or significantly improved following different antiviral treatments. So, the next time you consider the complex web of factors contributing to conditions like ME-CFS, post-COVID, and post-Borrelia, remember the potential role of reactivated herpes virus. It's a connection that's grounded in research and one that could hold the key to more effective treatments in the future.